Did you know that the earliest recognition of resistance bands came in 1896 when a Swiss man by the name of Gustav Gossweiler requested a patent for an elastic exercising device? To be used as a gymnastic apparatus to replace other apparatuses, Gustav's invention laid the foundation for other patents to follow up to this day. And yes, these rubbery to be portably things has become pretty popular over the years. Question is, do they actually build muscle? Let's get one thing out of the way first. If you're a beginner, absolutely, positively, you will see results using bands. Beginners, you guys are lucky. You'll pretty much respond to any type of exercise, including band exercises. Let's also get a few more other things out of the way. Bands are great for people going through physical therapy, rehab, and the elderly, since it's lower impact, easier to control for the most part, and something easy to do at home. And yes, bands are extremely portable. You can get all different colors of the rainbow with very different resistances that can do a bunch of very different exercises. Awesome. But now let's get to the good stuff. Can it give you all of them beautiful gains? We know the research definitely show a whole bunch of muscle growth and strength benefits when it comes to beginners, but as you get out of the phase athletes call newbie gains, making sure to use progressive overload and providing proper stimulus to your muscles is mucho importante for growth. So what does that mean for bands? Well, let's talk a little bit about the physiology of muscle contraction first. Warning, boring, boring science, science ahead. Contraction occurs within a sacromere via the sliding filament theory, where cross bridges are formed by a reaction between the elements of contraction, actin, and myosin. The head of a myosin filament attaches to an adjacent actin filament and forms the so-called bridge and then pulls the sucker towards the center of the sacromere. The more it pulls, the shorter the muscle fiber becomes, such as when you go from straight missiles to gun show. Now, based on different lengths of the muscle fiber, the amount of force you can produce changes. At its longest, force production is lowest due to the low contact between the contractile elements. In the mid-range, force is the highest with the most contact occurring, and then weak again at its shortest length due to overlapping. Here, take this funky scenario for example. A guy is pulling his thorn towards him attached to a rope. As he creates slack on the rope, another guy decides to join in and help, producing more pull power. The more they pull, the more and more people help out and produce more power. Eventually, they run out of rope space and start stepping back instead. But little did they know that there was another group pulling another stone right behind them. The two groups get in each other's way, forcing some people out and force production dwindles. Now apply this to muscle force production and you'll see a chart like this. Weakest in the beginning, strongest in the middle, and weak again at the end. I'm not sure if that made any sense. Anyway, you're probably wondering how the heck does this have anything to do with resistance bands? Well, I'll tell you after I explain what that means for your traditional dumbbells. Now, if I were to take a weight where I can lift pretty confidently at the middle range of motion, where I'm the strongest, the weight is probably still no good because I can't lift it for reps at the weakest part of the range. That means I have to go lighter, of course. But now the weight is too light in the middle of the range and I'm not getting the maximal stimulus I need for growth. And as far as the bicep curl, I'm not getting much of a stimulus at the end neither. I know, I know, I said that you're weaker at the end of the movement too. But in this case, something in biomechanics known as the moment arm is very short, meaning the line of resistance is very close to the axis, or your joint or elbow in this case. The shorter the moment arm, the less force needed to move an object. Thus, in the bicep curl, not a lot of force is produced at the end. I probably confused you even more than before, but let's continue. Okay, now let's finally look at resistance bands. The resistance applied from elastic bands are different from that of traditional weights. Duh. The way it is different is that it applies a growing level of resistance the more you pull through the range of motion. At the very start, the amount of tension and resistance is at its lowest, and then at its highest at the end of the movement. That's good though in this case with the bicep curl because that's what you want. A growing resistance since you're weakest in the beginning, strongest in the middle, and weak but low moment arm at the end. But it's not great for all exercises. Take the side raises, for example, where you're super strong struggling towards the top of the movement because the moment arm is much greater. And some bands, especially loop bands that are stronger, has an extremely wide range of resistance like this one, where it goes from 50 to 125 pounds of force, almost three times as much from start to finish. So this is a huge disadvantage to resistance bands, along with the fact that you'll grow out of the very 
very light bands really quickly, and then using the heavier bands will be tough because it'll start pulling you instead of you pulling it. As far as gains, it looks feasible, but only up to a certain point. Hold on a minute. We know weights have a constant load, which can be good, but it also means not enough resistance for the middle range of motion to create an optimal stimulus. And we know bands are good because of a continuous load, but it's too low in the beginning and too tough at the end. So why not combine them together? That's right, adding bands onto your weights is probably the best way to go to compensate for the differences in muscle force production. That means greater stimuli, greater volume, and greater gains. In fact, the studies back this up, where one even found as far as strength, subjects improved their one rep maxes twice as much with bands and weights than using weights alone. Results may vary. So the smart way to use bands is to simply use them with your exercises now. But if you do choose to use bands alone, maybe you can use it as a warm-up set before jumping into weights. Some people even find it useful to supplement a workout with band exercises at the end to push volume up a bit more and creating a heavier pump. And you probably even have some awesome ideas to use with your bands. And if you do, share it in the comments. Anyway, I hope this video was more helpful than confusing. And if you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching.